So a California sheriff has been withholding CCW license application approvals unless you donate to her. Shocking. Let's talk about that. Hey guys, as always, a big good you do to each of y'all. Shazam and golly. Thanks for stopping by, and boy, do I mean that. All right, I always say there's a lot going on, but today I'm leaving stuff out. I really am. I'm gonna give you a three pack by the end of this. You're gonna know what's going on. I do hope you have an opinion on these, especially the first one. I do wanna hear a little more about what y'all had to say on the first one, and uh, all sorts of stuff going on. We're gonna get it done. It's going to be a lot of education here, a little bit of commentary, and hopefully some fun as well. Buckle up, here we go. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by my friends over at the USCCA. It's the US Concealed Carry Association, literally helping to save lives. Let me explain. The USCCA is a membership association that provides self-defense education, training, and peace of mind to over a half a million responsibly armed Americans. Click down below, click the learn more right now if you're ready to start your journey as one of those folks. Big thank you to the folks at USCCA. A big thank you to each of y'all for every thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Thank you, appreciate the data. Thank you for hitting the thumbs up. Thank you for that. All right, yesterday I did a YouTube short. A lot of folks got really upset at me over it. I left stuff out. It's a 59 second format. But one of the things, if you missed it, I was just saying, hey, you know what? If you are uh, you know, drinking a, a 24 pack of Bud every night and sucking down Marlboros, don't talk nonstop about how you're really into self-protection when you're really into self-destruction. And one of the things that was, there's some folks that got mad and we had some great conversations. And one thing that people really, really hammered to me that I missed was all of those things that I talked about, like Mexican food, guilty, cigars, guilty, that we do, is that all of those things are things we're doing to ourselves, whereas self-defense is preventing what others do to us. Great point, solid point to all of y'all. So thank you for that conversation. All right, three here in a three pack for you. The first one, I do want to hear a little bit about what you have to say, because I'm not big. I don't know a ton about Stand Your Ground. Like there's a lot of nuances. I understand the big picture. Here's what's going on. Y'all know Matt Gates down in Florida. He has now taken Florida's national Stand Your Ground law and he has released or announced that he has proposed a bill in Congress to move that stand your ground from Florida over to national. So taking that same policy and applying it nationally. He has seven people total, congressmen and congresswomen, that are supporting this thing, and it's called the National Stand Your Ground Act of 2021. Nothing says 2021 like the last two weeks of the year, but what do I know? Why didn't they call it 2022? I don't know. But they are removing the duty of retreat and making uh, national stand your ground being law. And they, of course, and I get it, they're trying to trying to push this thing through and they in, invoked Kilo Romeo a lot when they announced it. What do you think? Let me know. And I always say that, and part of YouTube is trying to get people to have a reason to converse down below, but I do want to hear on that one because I don't know, every state is so different. And what, what do you think about that? So interesting. Also, Matt Gates is about halfway through his transformation. He's either going to be Ray Zelensky or he's gonna be hosting the Hunger Games, I'm not really sure. Matt Gates got some nice hair, am I jealous? A little, weird dude, I don't know, weird guy. Next, all right, indictment has just been handed down to Santa Clara County, California Sheriff. Her name is Lori Smith, turns out she's a complete dirtbag, allegedly, and uh, a, a grand jury has released the indictment. There's a bunch of charges, like she went to a, a hockey game and sat in a booth or sat up in somewhere that was expensive and it was more than $500 and she didn't report it. I get that. So there's a lot of charges in there. But for this conversation, the one that really makes me, uh, it really gets me, it turns out she has been not denying, but she's only been granting CCW permits to folks that donate to her campaign or are VIPs or are part of a couple different areas in, in her life that matter to her. So you gotta do something, you gotta, you know, scratch her back or she won't scratch. It's very much like New York City. And also anybody that's not a VIP, their applications for CCW are pending indefinitely. So she just ignores them. I have a problem with one person being in charge of an entire county who can and who cannot use their 
constitutional rights, but what do I know? Lori Smith has not stepped down as sheriff of the county. Uh, there's calls for her to. On January 12th, she is headed to court to answer those charges. And there's a lot of conflict of interest between now and then, like she's still the sheriff of the county. It is a mess. She's a politician. Forget, she's not law enforcement. She's a politician. Sheriffs at that level, especially counties of that size, they are politicians. A California politician withholding rights. Color me shocked. Next. All right, this one won't take just but just a minute, but I, I, I you know, I, 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 there's a lot going on in Alabama at all times, but specifically, woo, specifically about this, uh, Alabama is starting through the process of constitutional carry. People are fighting and infighting, and you know, it's causing a ruckus down in Alabama. They're wrestling about it. Specifically in Mobile County, there's also some ruckus going on there. The sheriff fired one of his captains because they were in disagreement over constitutional carry. One of the things that's interesting that there's a lot going on down there, but the one that I want to mention to you is that in Mobile County that the generation of revenue, revenue generation, let's call it what it is, taxing people to exercise their rights. Yep, it's literally what it is. Generates $1.2 million a year. And who gets to keep that? The Sheriff's Department. And I've really got a problem with that. Like that's really, that's an issue. It's one of the issues that are we're looking at nationally right now is do we tax people to exercise their right? Okay, I'll give you an administration fee, a paperwork fee, $6 a year. How about $6 a decade and just have it, or just make it all go away and get rid of the government altogether. That's a separate story. It's kind of like here, I was driving the other day and I passed five troopers in about an hour. I was driving down the interstate, state troopers, and if you mess up, their, their response is, give us money. Okay, well, can we donate that to, I don't know, St. Jude's? No, we're keeping it. So the ones that are policing you are also the ones keeping the cash. And it's only about, ca only about cash when it's five o'clock on a weekday and they're just sitting there writing them as fast as they can on the side of the interstate. Safety. I've never really, to be honest, really thought much about how much revenue is generated and the motivation of a sheriff's department to fight against this and to fight against constitutional carry because it's going to cause it's going to cause a ruckus like it's going on down in mobile alabama mobile mobile uh, to each of y'all thank you hope you have a comments on those things we got spicy friday coming up and going to be doing some more shorts as well chances for y'all to get upset at me it's kind of fun guys smoking their marlboro reds telling me that they're all into Self-protection, ah, it's kind of fun. It's a hard truth and something to, something to laugh about. Hope y'all are doing well. From my cold, dead hands, bye.